Hey, hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, people. Hey, welcome to the drawing board. Come on, we are we are in week number four. And I just want to kick it off to say, hey, good morning. Come on, happy Monday, guys. Come on, we made it to another week. Come on, you are in week number four. Come on, of the drawing board. If you can do this real quick, let me let me pull my chat up real quick. Who's back in the gym? Talk to me real quick. Who's, come on, be accountable. Who's been back in the gym? Just type in the comment segment. Say, hey, Pastor Ant, I'm back in the gym. Come on, I, I've been doing my prayer curls. Come on, I've been, I've been worshiping God. Come on, working on the biceps. Come on, you are spiritual fit in this season. So come on, stay in the gym. That's, that's the word for this week. That's your word. Come on, you know what? I'm staying in the gym. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm not going to say yes to other things that I don't supposed to be saying yes to. I'm going to stay committed to the plan that God has for me in this season. What I'm loving about being, what I'm, what I'm loving about the drawing board family is that we're talking about spiritual disciplines. Come on, somebody. We're, we're talking about, we're talking about getting back to the basics of our, our Christianity faith, how we relate to God. How do we worship God? How do we pray? Because do, through these spiritual disciplines or what we're calling them, come on, what we're calling a spiritual exercise, when we get into this pattern, there's a pattern that God has for us. I remember even back in January, kicking this all, God continued to, to even speak to us about this pattern that God wants to, uh, us to go after. When we fall in line with a pattern, we become the very image of what that pattern is getting ready to create. There's an image that God wants you to be molded and, and created into. In order to do that, we have to be in the pattern. We have to be in the consistency of that pattern to fall in line of what that pattern is getting ready to produce. So the very nature, your essence, your DNA, the image of God that he has created you in, there's a pattern, there's an image that that image has to obey to, in order to continue to represent what that image is supposed to be. For the first two episodes, we kicked it off talking about worship and prayer. And I, and I love that even today we're, we're going to be diving into, come on, somebody, the, the good old word of God. Come on, we're going, we're going to be talking about the word of God. And, and here's what I love about this. If I can set all of this up, I, I love this quote. And I want to quote it correctly, so I wrote it down. I don't, I don't want to mess it up. The scriptures do not change, but we do. Hear that again. The scriptures do not change, but we do. The same scriptures can give us new insights every time we read them. Scriptures don't change, but we do. But every time that we read the same scripture, it can give you a fresh insight. There's some, you ever read the scriptures before? Oh, I read that before. I, I got a good understanding of that scripture. Now, another time that we can come to the word of God, it can give us a fresh perspective from a new insight, a new angle, a new vantage point. This is the beauty of what the scripture can do in our life. And what I love about this is that even when we look at the iPad, um, I, I love my iPad. I, I love, come on, I love my iPad. Anybody, come on, you, you, if you know me by now, it's, it's an Apple product. It's not, it's not an Android. It's a, come on, shout out to all of my good old saved um, Christian folks who have Apple products. Uh, we don't tangle with, with, with Android. We, we only follow through with the, with the Lord's saying. But um, um, I love my iPad. I use my iPad for everything. I use my iPad for, for work, for meetings. Matter of fact, I, I even use my iPad on Sundays. I, I can think years ago when I first started preaching, I, I used to love preaching from the leather skin. I frowned upon other preachers. How, how dare other preachers preach from an electronic product and 10 years later, look at me, I, I fell right in line with that. Now I preach from my iPad product. And what I love about the iPad, I have an understanding that with this iPad product, it, 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 with this iPad product, it comes with a manual. Had this iPad for, for years now, I understand the more I read this iPad manual, there's going to be things that's going to come to my, my memory, things that I didn't know about, that this product, created by someone, the designer, 
has some specifics that they want to get the best out of this product in order for me as the user, as the, as the user, the, the owner of it, in order to use it correctly, I have to read the manual. So you see the, beauty, the beautiful thing about this, 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 the beautiful thing about this is that we understand like Steve Jobs, he, he's probably the one who created this. He's probably the one who had the vision, the idea. He's probably the one that, that wrote everything down. He had a vision for the iPad. Here's what I understand, even through some, a little bit of research. Steve Jobs is not the one who actually sat in the room all by himself and created the menu. He wasn't alone by himself creating the menu and then he presented it to the Apple. No, there was, there was actually a team that came around and, and began. He released the vision. The team caught the vision. The team began to uh, write the vision. The team began to write the menu so that the owner, the user, can actually get an understanding of the vision that Steve Jobs had for this product. Here's what, I, here's what I'm saying that, that I love that, that, that it says this in 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training, and for righteousness. All scripture is inspired by God. Just because the creator didn't use his hands to write it doesn't mean it's not right. Same thing with Steve Jobs. Just because Steve Jobs did not write the manual does not mean that that manual is not right. Steve Jobs breathed on that manual. Steve Jobs released his vision on that manual. Steve Jobs inspired that manual so that it would bring forth truth. And he oversaw that the truth of that menu, and as long as the menu is connected to the truth and the truth is connected to the designer, the truth is connected to the creator, that menu is actually the very thing that that user myself needs. I wrote this down that God is our creator. We are his creation. His Bible is our menu for his creation. Let me say that again, God is our creator. We are his creation. The Bible is the manual to get the best out of his creation. In order to get the best out of you, you have to go to the manual. We can't be like me when I buy a product from Best Buy or off Amazon. I don't need a manual. I can look at the picture and put it together. Fast four or five hours later, I'm still trying to put it together. Just grab the manual and Grab the menu, and the menu is going to tell you how to get the best out of this product. This is what the Word of God is all about, that God has breathed on the Holy Bible. And it's the menu for your, it's the menu for your life. I can say it this way for you as we begin to shift a little bit deeper in this, in, in this teaching. You will never go into a dark room and never turn on the light. Who, or may, may, sometimes, while I'm saying, I was thinking, you know what, son, sometimes I actually try to, you know, that midnight snack, you know, it hits you right at nighttime, you, you go downstairs, don't want to turn no lights on. <laughs> but um, but what, he, he, here's the beauty in that. I have a six-year-old. Sometimes my six-year-old has mystery toys all throughout the house that he forgot to clean up. And if I don't turn on that light, I begin to step on things that I did not see. Instead of turning, if I turn on the light, I can actually see the obstacles. I can actually see something in front of my next step. I, will, I, I should not travel in, even in my comfort zone. Come on, in my own house. I know every space, I know every inch, I know where everything is, I know where the furniture, I should be able to close my eyes and walk through my home because I know my home, even in my comfort space, I still turn on the light. Matter of fact, the Bible says it this way, that, that the word, that, that the word is, the, is the lamp unto our feet, unto our path. In other words, when I step in that room, I turn on the, dark, I turn on the light in the dark room. Whatever season of, of life that you are in, don't enter into a dark space without turning on the light. Turning on the light lets me see my, my next step. Turning on the light lets me see what's in front of my next step so that I won't stop, stumble and, and, and be clumsy or step on something that I don't supposed to step on. 
I can see this is what the word of God does. It gives me insight into my next step. Could it be that I'm that I'm in seasons of my life right now? This is why it's so important to make sure that we get back into the gym because we don't want to step on things in this season that we don't supposed to be stepping on. The word gives you the insight, my gosh. The word begins to give you the lamp. It shows you. You might not see the, you might not see all the way down the staircase, down the road, down the path, but his word is a promise to us. This is his manual to actually see our next step. So I, I want to say it this way because here's what it means about getting back to the gym. It means to we want to actually build our life upon God's word. H- how are you building? your life upon God's word. See, this is what, this is what I love about Jesus. As we, I'm not going to read the entire scripture. If you have some time, just go read Matthew's 11. I was reading it a couple of days ago. And we understand Matthew's 11 is about when Jesus fasted 40 days. Jesus fasted 40 days in the wilderness. And then the devil, the tempter that the scripture tells us, the tempter came to tempt him. I love it when I read it here that that the, that the enemy did not tempt Jesus before he went into the desert. The, the enemy did not tempt Jesus during the fast, during the middle of the fast. The, the, the enemy waited 40 days to when Jesus was vulnerable, 40 days of fasting. He waited until the end. Here's how strategic your enemy is. He wants to catch you when you're vulnerable. He wants to catch you when you're, when you're hungry. He wants to catch you when you're weak. He, he's waiting to catch you at the right time. He's planning and he's scheming to catch you at the right time. But he, here's what I love with Jesus' response was when, when, when the tempter, the, the devil began to throw up other ways of how he thinks Jesus should actually move in this, in this space of his life. When he said, hey, you should go do this, Jesus responded here. Watch this. Jesus says, it is written that man should not live by bread alone. In other words, Jesus said, it is written that man should not. It is written. In other words, Jesus chose. I'm going to say it this way. Jesus chose the word over his wants. He said, man should not live by bread alone. Jesus was hungry. Let, let's, let's be honest here. It wasn't that Jesus didn't want any food. 40 days, oh, I'm hungry. I want me, Anthony, I want some food. But he understood, do not choose your wants over the word. The word, it is written, the word, the word says this, to be in a space of your life where you can constantly choose the word over your wants. Here's what, here's what this appetite of reading God's words does. It gives me an appetite to consecutively, consistently choose the word over my wants. Just as Jesus was in, in the, just as Jesus was here being tempted, he, he was hungry, he was vulnerable, he was weak. He had some wants. We all can agree with that right now. You have some wants creating an appetite, or if I could say it this way, getting back in the gym as a spiritual discipline of engaging into the word of God gives me an appetite to always be in a space to choose his word over my wants. I want to be so in a space in my life where I'm being tempted by the enemy that I don't even look in his direction no more. I always, my natural response is always the word of God. It is written His word says this, choose, I'm going to say it this way, choose the word over his wants. But but not only do we want to build our life upon God's word, reading the word helps you grow up. Man, reading the word of God helps you grow. The more you read the word of God, it becomes a scripture, it becomes that mirror so that you can see yourself where you don't get it right. You can see God's love. You can see the correction. Like, like we, we read this early about, about what is in 2 Timothy is that the scripture is here to do what? The scripture is here to, to rebuke us. That's a good thing. The, the scripture is here to correct us. The scripture is here to train us in righteousness. 
in, in order to walk in that direction, we have to make sure that we are being under the teaching of the word of God for training in righteousness. We can't model that by ourselves. You can only model that from the word of God. The word of God has to be in it. You don't have the potential. The potential only comes from the word of God. To do it in a, in a gracious and molded heart that's lined up to God's will and God's way. Matter of fact, the Bible always tells us this, even when, when Peter was responding, Jesus said, hey, you only receive that through the Holy Spirit. You only receive that through the word of God. In other words, you don't have the capacity to touch my heart the way that I need to be touched. And here's what God is saying in order for when the word of God comes into your life. We want to make sure that we're responding in the right way. So I, I like it even in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 2. I like this scripture when we're talking about reading the word grows you up. It says this, it like newborn infants desire the pure milk of the word so that by it you may what? Grow up into your salvation. If you have tasted the Lord is good, the word of God is good for your soul. In other words, as you're growing as a, as a, uh, as a Christian, there are going to be seasons of your life where you're going to, where you're going to be drinking milk and then you're going to move on to meat. But hey, you have, what are you doing? This is what I always say myself. This is why planning is so important. This is why planning is so important. How are you feeding your soul? In this season of your life, being, this is what being back in the gym is all about. To be honest, I actually believe scripture engagement is probably the number one of out of all of the spiritual disciplines. Because if I can get this right, man, prayer is going to be so much easy. Worship is going to be so much easy. Fast and all, all of these different all of these different spiritual disciplines, if I can get a, if I can get in a flow in my life of where I'm engaging into the scripture on a daily consistent plan, everything else becomes so much easier if I can get rooted and grounded in his truth. Because once I get rooted and grounded in his truth, my roots is actually planted in the right thing. Man, if I can say it this way, I might have already used this uh, uh, analogy, but it's coming back to, um, to my mind, and I apologize if I did earlier. But I was just thinking about roots, and I, I remember when I planted, uh, I, matter of fact, well, me and Brenda, we moved into our, our new home a couple of years ago. And I remember they planted that, that tree in my front yard. Come, come to find out, family, I was wondering why this, this, this bush would never grow right. I, I took my shovel a couple of weeks ago, a couple months ago, and I dig down to see why it's not growing the way that it's supposed to grow. Come to find out the landscape was never planted it correctly. The roots never even got down into the soil. One chop of my shovel, the, the, the bush fell over. The whole time the roots never went down. Here's what we have to do. And here's what this analogy, this metaphor means. We have to make sure that our roots are being planted in the word of God. Because when our roots from ourselves is being planted in his word of God, what we're supposed to bloom and flourish to, we will actually become. What are, what are you planting in? What are your roots are connected to? Is it connected to your ideology, your preferences, your, your way of thinking? Or is it connected to God's truth? Because once it's connected to God's truth, it produces righteousness. And when it produces righteousness, it's connected to his promise for your life. Everything begins at the word of God. Can I say it this way? Everything begins at the breath of God. We can even go back to Genesis, what actually means the beginning. And Genesis teaches us this. Anything found in Genesis it means it's the beginning. So when you're studying in the scriptures, we're, we're dive a little bit in this. Even when you're studying in the, the scriptures, there's things, there's principles, there's things that begins. And, and we always look, okay, when did it begin first? So if I'm studying in the scriptures and I see something that happened in the New Testament, I want to see, is this the first time? Or did, is God actually teaching this throughout the scriptures? So a lot of times I will go back to Genesis and see, did this principle, this this is this way of thinking, this model, this pattern actually begin in Genesis? So even from the breath of God, God breathed upon Adam. 
In other words, his breath, his word, he breathed upon Adam and then he began to form Adam. This is a principle. God begins to form things from his breath. We can see throughout scripture, as a matter of fact, we can even see it again in, in, um, in the gospels and even in the act when God breathed and the Holy Spirit came. Matter of fact, he breathed upon the disciples and that was a new beginning. It was a new life. It was the Holy Spirit. It was the new, it was God forming something new so something new can begin his breath. We see right here in 2 Timothy, what we're talking about today, that his scripture is God's breath. One translation says, the one we read today said that it's, it's his, um, it's his uh, inspired. He would inspire. In other words, he would breathe upon it. So anytime God breathes upon something, he's forming something in your life. When he breathed upon the word, he's forming something in for us to walk and model into. In order to be formed and, and be in position and molded into the very thing that God wants to do in your life, we have to be in a position for God to breathe upon us. God breathes upon you each and every day through his word. That's what I said all of that to get right there. The way that God wants to breathe on you he wants to breathe on you through his word. This is why you, you guys know this. I don't know why this coming to my mind. You guys know the, the Snickers commercial? You know, you know the, and the Snickers commercial when the person's acting like a different person and then they go to eat the Snickers and then they actually uh, change back into the person that they're supposed to be? I love the one with, uh, I forget the, the older lady uh, names, but uh, she was playing football. She ate the Snickers and she changed back. F funny commercial, it's seven o'clock in the morning. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but here's the analogy from that. Betty White, there we go. Thank you. Um, here's the analogy from that. When I'm out of alignment of what of who God called me to be, I always check it, how's my spiritual uh scripture engagement. Because scripture engagement is going to get me back in my spot. When I'm having a week when I just feel off. My mind is kind of all over the place. Come on, you're a little bit irritable. Maybe your attitude is not <laughs> right where it needs to be. Your, your patience is not right where it needs to be. I always check myself, not just in worship and prayer. I always check myself. Man, how's my scripture engagement? Because if you're anything like me, when I get hungry, I get irritable. Come on. All of my real people say amen. Come on. When, when I get hungry... I get irritable. I get a little, little grounding. I, I, I'm, a, my, I'm a little quicker with the kids. Come on, they, because I'm hungry. It's the same thing for my soul. My soul is trying to let me know, dude, I'm hungry. Feed me. Feed me. Because when you feed me, it begins to be God's breath, the very thing that I need. I need God's breath daily in my life. I need his strength in order to make it. I need his wisdom in order to make right decisions. I need the breath of God. How is God, the way that God wants to breathe on you today, he wants to breathe on you through, <clears throat> excuse me, through his word. But we also want to make sure that we want to be students of his word. I'm, I'm so big on this. Make sure, Celebration Church, let's be a sound doctrine church. I'm rightly dividing the word of God. Can I say it this way? God's word is always truth. The way that we interpret it doesn't make his word not true anymore. It just makes your interpretation wrong. So, 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 so even when, even when I say this, that man, I, I, I'm trying to be, uh, because this is something that, that I'm very passionate about that even, even being a pastor, come on, I'll keep it, I'll be real honest with you even on here. Sometimes pastors can misinterpret the God's word and now it's social media and, you know, we live in a viral world today. So it's not like back when I first started preaching, you can, you can preach a sermon wrong and probably won't nobody know. You preach a sermon wrong these days, everybody in the world going to know because we have to make sure that we're rightly dividing his word. If you misinterpret the word, it doesn't make God's word wrong. It just makes your interpretation wrong. So this is why I, I, I love, I'll read this, I'll read this first and I want to set it up. Second Timothy 2 and 15, it says, be diligent to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who doesn't need to be ashamed, correctly teaching the word of God. 
the word of truth. Another translation says it this way, to be students of his word. You are a student of God's word. To make sure that we're not using God's word as a textbook, but we are using God's word as a sacred piece for we need it in our life. In other words, we don't read God's word just for our heart. We also read it for our mind. God wants to speak to your mind and your heart as well. But we're not just reading a word to get through chapters. We're reading his word to get to an understanding. And that understanding comes through patience and time with the Holy Spirit. How are you being a student of God's word? The most best about the best thing you can invest in your life is your relationship with Jesus Christ. So the investments that you're making in this season of your life, how are you investing so that you can become a better student at God's word? Matter of fact, if I can say it this way, I read the scriptures with humility. Begin there. B begin with reading the scriptures with humility. And what I mean by this, in other words, each morning or throughout the day when I open up the scriptures, I, I, I ask God this, God, through humility, show me something fresh that I've never seen before. Show me something fresh that, that, I, that I just never seen before in the word of God. Because I never want to live a life as if, though, God, in your word, I already seen this already. When I'm reading his word, I already, God, show me something fresh through humility. It doesn't matter if I'm just reading John 3.16. God, show me something fresh through humility. God begins to illuminate something that you've never seen before. The next is read the scriptures with honor. Read the scriptures with honor. Here's what I mean by that. Please understand, hear my heart. This is a sacred text. This is sacred. This is, this is just not words on a paper. We don't believe that. We believe that this is God's breath put in on ink inspired by Raiders to give to our soul so that we can walk in the image that God has created us. In other words, we have to handle his sacred text as if it is sacred. It is just not words on paper. This is God's breath that he's breathing for our souls so our souls can be nourished the right way. When we honor the text correctly, God begins to move through our minds, through our heart, and through our souls in the right way that we need him to move to. That all begins when we honor the text. Doesn't matter from Genesis to Revelation, we come to his text, his sacred text, and we say, God, we honor you because this is the living word. This is the logos. This is your breath. This is the very thing that humanity needs from Genesis all the way through with Jesus to Revelation. This is the sacred text. And as a student, we honor and we sit under any sound doctrine and we say, Holy Spirit, speak to us. Not only did you speak when Jesus was in flesh here on earth, but you're speaking through the Holy Spirit and you're also speaking through the living word of God. He's also speaking through it. And the next one, I say this, read the scriptures through the lenses of love. Read the scripture through the lenses of love. Here's what I mean by that. It's understanding that God loves you when you're reading the scriptures. From, from Genesis all the way through, you have her understanding that God loves you. Here's what a lot of us could easily deal with. And I probably don't have enough time to really, really unpack this how I really want to unpack this because the way that you were raised by your father, whether that's present or not, a lot of times early in our relationship with God, we kind of resemble from how we were raised with our father, whether our father was present in our life. Maybe our father loved us, cherished us, taught us. Or maybe your father was present in your life and your father was very discipline, disciplinary, was very tough love. Or maybe your, maybe your father wasn't present in your life. So a lot of times when we, when we come new to Christianity and, and we have this image of father in our head, we have an image of fatherhood that we have been exposed to. Sometimes we have to get close enough to the father 
our heavenly father so that we can catch his love and not just the love of our biological father. Because the love of your biological father will never meet the love that your heavenly father has for you. Whether your father, biological father is wonderful or maybe your biological father wasn't present in your life, we don't base our, our exposure to our biological father based on the love of our exposure now to our heavenly father. So I'm setting this all up for a reason because we can easily read the word of God. And when we read it, we see God's love or we see God's discipline. And if we were exposed to discipline in one way, we can easily, our natural, our default can begin to shift back to, oh, maybe God doesn't love me because I've been exposed to this type of disciplinary in my life. When I make a mistake, this is how my father treated me. This is how my father reacted. And here's what God is saying. God is saying, when you read my word, make sure you read it through the lenses of my love. That I love you despite where we don't get it right, God still loves you. Despite where we don't make the right choices, God still loves you. There's still grace. But through his grace, there's rebuking and there's teaching. And we, we see this sound teaching found throughout the scriptures, but it's all through love. It's all through love because he wants to keep you close to him, to him so that he can mold you and, and, and begin to form you and, and move you in the direction that he's calling you to be. So I want to end this. I want to end this call today on, on the episode on the drawing board, because just like we kicked this off about making sure that we have a plan to succeed in life. We can have a plan for everything in our life, but do we have a plan for scripture engagement? Like I said, we can have a plan for losing weight. We can have a plan for going to the gym. We can have a plan. Hopefully you got a plan for the maintenance on your car, for the oil. Like we can have a plan for a lot of things, but just like I said earlier, probably the number one spiritual discipline is, sp is scripture engagement. Do you have a plan to stay connected to the breath of God? Whew. Do you have a plan to stay in position so God can breathe on you every day? He's waiting to breathe on you so that you can get the strength to run the race that he has called you to. So if I can say it this way, I remember my mom used to say this, a vitamin a day would keep the doctor away. A vitamin a day will keep the doctor away. I can say it this way. A verse a day keeps the distraction away. If a vitamin a day can keep the doctor away, I believe a verse a day can keep the distraction away. So if I can say it, if I can also say it this way, what are you chewing on in this season? It's something I, I, I ask myself, I ask my accountability brother, like, hey, what, what are you chewing on? Here's what I mean by that. You don't chew on a lot, you chew on a little bit. So you don't need a whole lot of scriptures in your mouth at one time. You just need a little bit of scripture, what you're chewing on. We're not trying to create a, a, a rhythm or appetite of, 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 of digesting a whole lot of chapters with no understanding. Digesting a whole lot, so it, it could be a verse a day, it could be two verses, it could be a chapter, whatever God is calling you to, all I'm saying, chew on it. Chew on it all day. Find yourself going back and chewing on it all day. If I want to break it down this way, I'm going to give you five quick points to, um, to make sure that you're creating an appetite to feed your soul. Number one, commit to studying daily. Every day. Every day, chew on something. Every day, chew on something. I love in a you version it. It holds you accountable. It lets you know if you're on a streak. Man, I, 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 get, I get mad when, I, when, I, when, I, when my streak gets messed up. Like, oh, man, I actually read my word. I went to the digital print. I mean, uh, I, went, I went to the, um, the, the, the leather Bible, and it didn't count. I, I want to make sure I'm in a streak. I want to make sure that I'm in position, really, to be breathed upon by God. Commit to, uh, to studying daily. Number two. Set a regular time every day. This is a consistent time. You're setting a regular time to be in the position so God can breathe on you. What's the best time throughout the day that you can give God your best? Where you can have distraction free. Matter of fact, that's number three. Location free of distractions. 
Where is a space in your daily routine in your life that's distraction free? Maybe it's 15 minutes. Maybe it's 30. Maybe wh whatever it is, carve out time where you can be distraction free and say, God, breathe on me. I want to call. I want to get into your word. I want to feed my appetite. Number four, prepare yourself to listen to the spirit before you start reading. Prepare yourself. Maybe that's through worship. Maybe that's through just quiet time. You're not, you're not you just quiet. You're just sitting. You want to, that's so important because even through worship, and we didn't talk about this a lot of times, a lot of times we're doing majority of the talking. I love, I want to get into worship where I hear God talk more than me. I want to get into God's word where I hear God's voice more than me. Creating a space where we hear God speaking to us. So even when we're going into the scripture engagement, I want to make sure that my heart is in a position so that I can actually hear what God is speaking. So I chew on that. I'll break it down. I, I, I'll get into his word out. And I, I didn't, I didn't really go into this, whether there, there's so many ways, <clears throat> excuse me, there's so many ways to break down the word of God. Personally, I love like the soap method. The soap method is a very popular way just to take a scripture and that's S for scripture. O for observation. What are you observing in this word? This can be even when, when this can be location, context, even, even the background, custom, tradition, historical. Like we can, it's so much, what are you observing? So when, I, when you're breaking the word down, I want to know all of it. I want to know why they say this. I want to know why they're wearing this. I want to know why did this happen? Not taking the scripture out of context, because we just don't want to take one scripture. I want all of the context. I want the context in that chapter. I want the context in the chapters before. I want the context in the chapters after. I want the full scope of the picture. This is why scripture engagement and studying it is, is important. You will never watch a movie and only take the middle and never get the front and the back. Doesn't make any sense. So you have to make sure that you're setting that rhythms and routines and studying so that you can get the full picture this only happens. This is why it's so important to make sure that we're creating space for the Holy Spirit to speak to us and teach us. And number five, I'll end it with this. Study for a period of time. Rather than reading a certain number of chapters, I said this early. In other words, what are you chewing on? What are you chewing on? Don't set the goal for chapters. Set the goal for understanding. I want to have an understanding. Oh, I did. I forgot A and P. I'm so sorry. Thanks, Julius. Let me go back. A is application. Thank you. So let me go back. Soap method. Let me break it down one more time. I'm so sorry. Thank you, uh, Julius, for that. S, scripture. O, observation. A is application. How is this being up? How can I apply this to me? How's this, how's this biblical context going to make sense for a modern application? That's why I'm so big, even when, even when I'm studying, even when I'm preaching, how can I bring a biblical context to a modern day society? How is this going to help me in, on Wednesday with my son? How, how, what is that? How can I apply this? God teaches us through the Holy Spirit, through his living word, how you can apply this. This is my application. I don't want to just speak to the heart. Even when I'm preaching, I don't want to just preach to your heart. I want to preach to your mind because if the mind can get in place. The heart is important. I love preaching to the heart because the heart is transformed. The whole body will move. But also I wanted to make sure your heart is being transformed, but I also want to make sure that your mind is being transformed because when your mind is being touched on a Wednesday, you have, you have rhythms and routines and understanding and not a discipline to stay in alignment to now where your heart is. So this is why it's so important. This is why it's so important, even when you're being teaching, even as a pastor preaching, that we have to make sure that we're preaching to the heart, but we also preaching to the, to the mind. Because both are needed. While you're, while you're studying the word of God, is just not getting a hype scripture. Uh, we got some hype scriptures. Come on. There's some script. You got some go-to scriptures that feel good, that give you goosebumps. And that's great. I love that. 
But also, I want to make sure that how are you applying that to your life? What's the application in that scripture that makes you feel good? What are the rhythms in your life that can make you feel good? And P, S-O-A-P, P is prayer. Always end the session with prayer. Begin to pray over it and, and like God, just get a great sense on it. God, Holy Spirit, pray over it. So that there's different ways. I personally love, and it can get a little costly. I love the logos um, software. They have different levels of that you can, it's so many, I, I, mean, I feel like I need, I need to spend some more time on this, but it's so many, it's commentary. It's like, hear my heart on this family. Whatever you invest in is what you believe in. If you believe in yourself and you believe in your spiritual growth, invest in being a student of God's word. Invest in it. Spend money into it. Spend money into, into, in, in, into books and commentaries and softwares. Uh, spend money. Invest in it. A book. I, I remember when I first got saved over 10, 15 years ago, and I still got books in my library now a month a day. I wasn't making that much money. You know what? I can buy one book a, one book a month. One book a month, I would just buy. And before I know it, people started sending me commentaries and, and different stuff. Why? Because I want to be a student of God's word. I want God to breathe on me daily. Amen, 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 amen. So that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And, and as we get ready to close, I wrote this down. And I, I kind of said it already as we get ready to, to pray over this. Do you read? This is a great reflection for this week. I always want to end this session with um, a reflection question. For your weeks, are you reading for understanding or are you just reading to finish? This is what I wrote in my notes even last night before I laid down. It's a great question. During this week of spending time with God and his word, am I just reading for understanding or am, am I just reading to finish or am I reading to actually get an understanding? So there's going to be time where you just need to pause and sit right there. Break it down. Study it. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Don't just read to finish a race. Read to get an understanding what the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. Like we said, to, in, to kick this off, get ready to pray it out. Scriptures never change, but we do. But the same scripture can give you a fresh insight. That's why it's so important. Here's what we're learning through these each week of learning how to pause with God. Learning how to pause allows God to be God. Learning how to pause in scripture engagement gives room for the Holy Spirit to speak to you the way he wants to speak to you. Amen? Amen, amen. Let me pray over you real quick. And Father God, we love you. We thank you for this, this morning of, of kicking off another incredible week in your word. Your, your word says that your word is the lamp unto our path. That even as we found out when you, when you breathe your breath, your word is literally your breath to us. The very breath that we need to be nourished, to be made strong, to give us wisdom, to give us the, the breath that we need to run the race that we were called to run. So even as we are leaning more into this, even this week, Lord God, begin to illuminate and reveal to us where we can tighten up our schedules, we can make a stronger commitment that we can actually begin to say no to certain things so that we can say yes to reading your word. Even give us that appetite, increase our appetite that even right now in this season, we are more hungry for you. We are more thirsty for you, that you are the very breath that we need. Breathe on each and every one of us every day of this week, Lord God. As we begin to walk in that pattern, begin to walk in that model, you are the very thing that we need. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, amen, amen. We well, love you guys so, so much.